Hi there. This is the AnyCube Extruron and this is the Matrix Extruder. And today we're going to put them together. The AnyCube Extruron originally comes with a Bowden setup. I believe that a drag drive system should be one of the main upgrades for this printer. And today we're also going to upgrade the probe that the printer originally comes with with a BLT touch. The Matrix Extruder is purchased from Triangle Labs or D-Force as is known today on AliExpress. We're going to replace the original Bowden setup of the Matrix Extruder with this drag drive system. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's take a look at what comes in the box from Triangle Labs. We have the extruder, this direct drive system is comprised of a heatsink and extruder mechanism, as well as the stepper motor all presented in a cohesive unit. This facilitates a very short filament path and therefore the ability to print flexible materials as opposed to a typical Bowden setup with which it can be very challenging to accomplish the same result. The matrix extruder comes with a bimetal heat break which should provide better thermal isolation given the very short distance between the heater block and the extruder chamber. This is important as we want to reduce any kind of heat creep into the extruder and have the filament melt before entering the heater block. We are also provided with a 4010 24 volt extruder heat sink fan to dissipate heat, as well as a 40 watt 24 volt heater cartridge to heat up the block and nozzle. A 104 NT 4 thermistor to monitor the nozzle temperatures. Please note that for this video, I'm using a PT100 thermistor, also from Triangle Labs that when paired with an amp can work with higher temperatures, purchased separately. We also find silicon socks, a brass nozzle and a heater block. Package comes with a brass block but as you can see I opted to upgrade to a plated copper material to handle higher temperatures. And finally we're presented with tools to help us assemble the extruder. To address the elephant in the room, this is a clone of the Hymera extruder from E3D, with just a few design deviations. At the time of filming, the Hymera is priced at about 130 US dollars, while the Matrix Extruder is 100 dollars. Now this is by no means a bad clone. In fact, most of the things that I've acquired from Triangle Labs have been of very high quality. The Matrix Extruder is a clone, but is a well-made one, and I believe Triangle Labs has become quite a reliable source for 3D printer parts throughout the community. In this video, I will not advise on which one is better, as I have not tested the Hymera. So without further delay, let's put this on the Anycubic Chiron. First we will need to disassemble the current X gantry from the printer. The process is straightforward. We have to remove the fan assemblies, heater block, any bed leveling probes, thermistor and heater cartridge. When we reach the mini circuit board where all these elements are connected, please make note of where each device is connected. This will ensure that we do not run into any issues when reconnecting the new device to the board. I would also advise that you save all the fasteners as you may be able to reuse them when mounting the new extruder. We have to mount the extruder to an adapter, so I decided to mix two community available designs. One, to fix the plates to the gantry, and two, to have the ability to use the mini circuit board that the Anycubic Chiron comes with. You will find the links to these designs in the video description. We begin by mounting the motor to the adapter. Patience is required to have the adapter and extruder assembled. For instance, I used one screw to mount the extruder to the adapter, install the adapter to the main X carriage with the motor tilted, and finally tighten the motor to the adapter using the screws from the back. While the Matrix extruder did come with a bunch of M3 hex socket bolts, I would encourage anyone to have a wide variety of M3 bolt lengths on hand. As we are using custom brackets and adapters, what is provided by Triangle Labs may not be sufficient for this specific mod. Link in the description to help you acquire variety boxes of these bolts. Next, we will have to pull the wires from the gantry through the cable chain. This now includes the supplied extruder motor wires and the BL touch wires. Using a small flathead screwdriver, open the chain links as shown. Finally, remove the entire link chain system from the mounting position. We will now have to address the connection from the stepper motor to the main board of the printer. Unfortunately, the cables provided are not long enough to reach the board, so I decided to use the wire terminations of the original extruder. You may decide to run new, longer wires to the board, solder the older extruder wires to the new, or as I decided to do, crimp the ends and use a combination of JST male-female connectors. 
Now that we have dealt with the motor connections, let's adjust the lengths of the thermistor and heater cartridge as we have to crimp and install JST connectors to them. This will allow us to connect them to the mini circuit board the Chiron comes with. We are now ready to start putting the cable chain back together. We will guide the extruder motor wires as well as the BL touch wires through the link chain and close the sections off as shown. Once done, fix the chain to its mounting points. We will have to install a BL touch mounting adapter as well, to which I have left a link in the video description. It should be inserted as shown and then the screw tightened. In the next few steps we will put together the hot end and the cooling fans. We begin with attaching the heat brake to the heater block. Please note the position. The nozzle should be closest to the heater cartridge hole while the heat brake should be on the opposite side. Tighten the heat brake slightly at one end and on the other side insert the desired nozzle. I think a 0.6mm size nozzle would be a good starting point for this extruder printer combination. For our next step we insert the heater cartridge and thermistor into the heater block. Don't forget the fasteners to secure these in place. Before inserting the hot end into the extruder we will have to apply some thermal paste which Triangle Labs has provided with the extruder. Once positioned we fix the heat brake by tightening the set screw as shown. Before starting with the fan mounting let's route some of these wires behind the adapter insert the circuit board in its receptacle and connect some of the wires. If you're wondering which hot end fan to use like I was, I would advise on using the one provided by Triangle Labs instead of the one that came with the Anycubic Chiron. Following some unscientific tests, I clearly determined that the Matrix provided fan is far superior in terms of airflow. The decision is easy. So let's mount it to the extruder with two hex screws as shown. Time for the part cooling fan, and for this we will need an adapter. Again, I will leave a link in the description for the one used in the video. Part cooling will be done by this 24 volt 5015 blower fan. We have to use two M4 bolts which are about 25mm in length and M4 nuts to secure the fan between the two mounting plates. Before putting the part cooling fan on the extruder, I decided to mount the BL touch probe. Please note that while in the video I am not using spacers, subsequently I decided to use some nuts to lower the probe a bit while adjusting the Z offset. It's right about that time that we must have our work checked by Inspector Flea. Once the go-ahead is given, we can finally finish mounting the part cooling fan. Use two appropriately sized M3 bolts to attach the assembly to the extruder as shown. Time to do some final touch-ups such as finish connecting all the wires and adjusting the part cooling fan. Once finished, we will finally have a completed direct drive system for the Anycubic Chiron, which should allow us greater flexibility in the filaments used and with some tuning, better performance than with the stock setup. While I will not go through the firmware setup in this video, let's at least enjoy some time lapses with the new extruder. See you on the next project!